interviews with business owners that puts them in front of a global audience. And in behind those shows is a whole range of things, from digital magazines, to social media, to blogging, to email, to lead generation, just a whole range of things. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Everyday Business Show. I'm your host, Tony Lontis, and we have another amazing guest to chat to today with a fascinating conversation around workplace stress and burnout. Now, for those of you that are listening live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, or Twitter, please don't forget to leave us a comment. And the notes about the show appear wherever you're watching the show and you can connect directly to our guest via those connections attached to the show. Now, if you want to catch up on everyday business shows, please don't forget that you can jump on the Tony TV channel app on Roku, LG and Samsung. We're also on Binge Networks, Hero Go, Zondra TV and right across the planet. Now, Each and every week, we do a special acknowledgement to the Indigenous communities who've played an incredible role in the development of our country and its cultural identity. So I want to respectfully acknowledge the people of the Yugamba language region on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. And I want to pay my respect to the Elders past, present and emerging Mm -hmm and all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders here listening and watching today. Now, another reminder that we have recently launched Everyday Women's Network, available today on subscription. You just have to jump on to EWN online and jump on and enjoy the content that we have for everyone. Now, there's everything from business to spirituality, from crystal healing to authors. So we hope that you can jump on and join us and enjoy your own TV. Today, our guest is the beautiful Julia Reinberg, and she is talking about workplace toxicity and burnout. Julia is a coach who transforms and eliminates workplace burnout and helps manage toxic work environments. Julia understands what it's like to go to work and not want to be there because of all the negativity. She's worked on burnout and she has worked with burnout and worked in toxic work environments. And after many years in corporate life, she decided she wanted to help others make the change that they needed. Both She works both individually and corporately and helps people and corporations feel better and safe again. Now, interestingly, some of you might not be aware of the statistics around burnout. Burnout, rather. According to Deloitte, 75% of workers have experienced burnout, with 40% saying that they were subject to um, experiencing burnout specifically during the pandemic. 67% of workers believe that burnout was worsened over the course of the pandemic and 83% of employees say burnout can negatively impact on personal in uh, relationships. Um, according to the Muse, a toxic work environment is one where negative behaviours such as manipulation, bullying, yelling and so on are so intrinsic in the culture of the organisation that it lacks a productivity, there's a lack of trust, high stress levels, infighting and discrimination because this is the norm. It's an environment that makes you feel psychologically unsafe, according to Coach Eli Bahamond. Now, Julia, thank you and welcome to the show today. Oh, thank you so much, Tony. It's an honour to be here, truly. It's a fascinating conversation to have today. And I'm wondering, Julia, if we could start by telling a little bit about your journey and how you started doing this work. 
Absolutely. So over a year ago, I was experiencing extreme tiredness. I was working all kinds of crazy hours. Sometimes it was starting at different times in the morning. I'm not one that start, likes to start my day at three o'clock in the morning or am I ready for it? But that was sometimes what the job required to be to drive to to drive to the job and start the job. So that involved driving as well. And sometimes the hours would last enormous eight, but sometimes more than eight, sometimes up to 11 or 12, 12 hours. Wow. That's a long and, work day. Yes. And when you were done with the work, we have to drive back, back home to our hometown. Mm -hmm. And depending on where, where we went to work, it can sometimes take a couple of hours to get home. Mm. And sometimes we don't get home till the late evening and then another job would be due to start the next day and it would start all over again wow yes and so january to january to april was was crazy crazy hours and yes. and i started feeling extremely tired i just thought i was well i'm i'm tired i'm i've been working a lot of hours it's okay i'm going to be able to get rid of it but it didn't go away it actually got worse oh. it got to the point where I was exhausted the second I woke up and it was really hard to carry on through the, throughout the day when I felt like that um I had never heard of heard of the term burnout or knew knew what it was but I was kind of curious so uh, like, you well, started I'll asking just... questions. Yeah, I started. I'm like, why? Well, why do I feel like this? What's going on? And so I started to look, look on the internet to see if I could find what was causing this. And then, like, some of the symptoms matched up. I'm like, oh, that's exactly what this is. I'm, I'm really burnt out. But I thought at the time, I have. I have no choice but to keep going. Keep I can't going. really quit. Mm -hmm. I can't quit. That's what was what I thought. So I I kept going. I kept being really tired. And yeah, one, one day when I was driving home, I got a terrible feeling coming over to me, coming over me. My the office where we were stationed wasn't too far from my house, but mm -hmm. When I started driving, all of a sudden, I got the feeling like my body was going to shut down. Oh, Julia. so so I had to I had to pull over. I was wondering, oh, what should I do? Should I call? Should I call somebody for help? Should I call somebody for help? And then I drank some water and closed my eyes. And then about after about five ten minutes, the feeling passed, and I was able to go home. And I went straight to get bed. And then. Later on, it happened again, a few a couple months later. And then a voice said to me, You've, you have to leave this. You have to stop. And then I thought to myself, well, I can't stop. I have no choice. Mm -hmm. But but you do have a then, choice, don't you, Julia? You do. You always have a choice. So when I got out of that, out of that tired state, I began to... I began to do some research on the burnout and I was, I was horrified about how bad it was mm -hmm. all over the world. Yes. And I saw, well, I don't want people going through what I went through. Mm -hmm. What could I do to help? And then after some thinking and ideas came to me, that's when, Julia's wellness coaching was born well done you it's a difficult decision to make when you're in that place and to know that you made that and here you are talking to me and we're about to talk about how you help people in the same state make things better Julia from your perspective um what does workplace burnout look like for you um, it looks like people being people being overwhelmed with unrealistic 
work expectations and unrealistic deadlines. Mm -hmm. um, pe people are working long hours trying to get their workload done and they're, all, they're stressed out because they don't have enough time time in the day because there's just so much and they're understaffed because people are phoning in sick mm. or they've quit mm. and, and sorry julie go on and when if when pe other people don't show up that's when their work starts getting piled onto the person trying to do the work so they've got even more work to do and they're overwhelmed and they don't know when to take a break they don't know when to step away. So that sort of description, what you're describing is actually hap happening across workplaces um, across the world at the moment, Julia. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm curious, when you were doing your research, what other sorts of things did you find that were happening in workplaces across the world? Um, besides being burnt out, you mean? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I've when I was doing some research for our interview, there were lots of articles on um that were talking about things like the lack of support and the changing work mm -hmm. role responsibilities and the hybrid working arrangements and the technology and et cetera, et cetera. Have you found that? From the research and the people that you work with um not to not to that extent no but i just found that people are just disengaged they don't they don't want to be in the workplace at all and according to the the world health organization burnout is now a medical condition absolutely absolutely um when we talk about toxic workplaces can yeah. you just describe for the audience mm -hmm. what a toxic workplace looks like yes so toxic workplace look like one one worker could say could be so and so doesn't want to work with xyz uh -huh. xyz is gossiping about so and so mm -hmm. and there could be favorite favoritism between employees, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I've also I've also heard of, of a group of em employees targeting a certain person in in the workplace for whatever reason, just to bully them. I've heard of that happening. Yeah, um, I was just I was going to ask you: Have you worked with people that have been um, have experienced bullying? Because that's still you would think with the information and knowledge around that people would understand what bullying looks like, but it's still happening, isn't it, Julia? It is still happening. Um, one of the other things I found when um, I was researching this particular topic um, to talk to you was that there is a clear lack of boundaries between um, work colleagues, that they don't trust each other, that they may actually treat yeah. other people with contempt. Um, and there's all sorts of um, unhealthy relationships in that workplace. Are they typical of the things that you would find in a toxic workplace, Julia? Oh, yes, absolutely. And when you're working in a toxic work environment, you go home and then you're, you're so, you're so tired from what's going on at work and you bring it home yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because, Julia, for most of us, our place of work is where we spend a lot of our time. And if it it's toxic, if you don't want to be there but you feel like you have to because of circumstances, because you've got to pay bills, you've got to pay a mortgage, you've got no choice, yeah. that makes things worse, doesn't it? It does. It definitely wouldn't be easy, but if if somebody decided well they're just gonna try and stick around and see what happens then if they don't happen to not be getting along with a certain person they should really try and find the common ground julia can you can you work with people who come to you and go look this 
where I'm working is just so horrible. Can you actually help them manage themselves in a toxic workplace? Because sometimes there really is no alternative. Sometimes there really is no way that they can leave that that job. Can you help them help themselves, I guess I'm asking, in that sort of workplace? Are there strategies, are there tools that they can use that help them in that time in that space? Oh my goodness, I've lost Julia. I'll just oh there she is. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear the the rest of your question. <laughs> I'm wondering if someone comes to you and um they they're talking about what you recognize as a toxic workplace and there is no option for them to leave that role or that job, are there strategies? Can you help them stay in that job but manage themselves in that toxic environment? Are there some pointers? Um, yes, absolutely. What you said, what you said about establishing boundaries, mm. that's, that would definitely be a good go to for that. And also finding common ground. With so you can the teach people and help them through that to make them feel a little safer at work? Yes. Fantastic. Um, the other thing I was going to ask you about, Julia, is for some people that workplace stress or that toxic environment has a physical um, component and they feel it in their body. Now, you've described that overwhelming feeling of fatigue and tiredness. What are Anxi the symptoms? Anxiety, Anxiety as well. Yeah. What are some of the other things that people might experience if they're in that toxic workplace? Well, they're not, they're going to be walking on eggshells, wondering what's going to happen to them next. They're going to probably have headaches, stomach aches. They're just going to feel extremely oh. anxious, have a fast heartbeat because they don't know what's going to happen. So all of those, if anyone's listening today and recognizes that they have a workplace that is not so great and they're experiencing some of those um, symptoms, they're headed towards burnout, aren't they? Yes, they are. Yeah. Usually toxic work environments do come before the burnout. Mm. And we and don't want burnout. and we don't want people to burn out because that's not very good. No, for we don't you, your mental health, your physical health, your family's health, not good for anyone, is it? No, it's not. Julia. What do you think needs to happen in workplaces generally to make sure that people are aware of help and support? What what do you think needs to happen in workplaces? Um, I need I definitely think that workplaces need to need to sit down with their with their employees and then they need to figure out what's no what's not working and change what what isn't working and if they don't have time to do that then i can come definitely come in and that's one of the things that. that you love to do isn't it julia that you actually like to go into workplaces and manage that um for the employees and the employers so you would get them together and go what's not working what's wrong and then work them through yes uh, how to fix it absolutely yeah fantastic and that's what you've dedicated your life to now isn't it trying to facilitate some of those discussions around how we move from a toxic workplace to an engaged workplace and how employees navigate um, toxic workplaces and so that they don't get to burn out but the other part of your work is working with people who have burnt out can you give us some ideas of how you do that Julia so starting to work with them yes um, I would have a converse I would have a conversation with them to figure out what what exactly is going on what isn't working mm -hmm. and then I would customize a plan based to them based on what their needs are fantastic so you and then, have yes yeah, sorry go on 
And the same would go for workshops that I do too. Yes. Um, I would, if it's, if it's a group of up to 50 people, it, do, it doesn't matter. I still want to hear from every single person there what they think isn't working or, mm -hmm. and what they feel strongly about what needs to change. Yeah. And, and you create a safe environment for those conversations to happen, don't you? Yes, I do. So you make sure that each one of those participants is heard and that yes. they're not subjected to further bullying or gaslighting or being talked yeah. over or all of those things you f can facilitate for a workplace um, okay. and yeah. help them work through that. Julia, if someone's listening today and they think, oh, my goodness, that sounds familiar, I think I'm, I think I'm working too hard, I think I'm headed towards burnout, what would you suggest that they do? Um, first thing I, I think they need to do is definitely step away from the situation. Mm. Uh, do something that they enjoy. Mm. Start So step away from the situation completely. Don't go back to it for yes. a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, def yeah, do something that they want to do. Fantastic. So it's actually about taking themselves out of the situation for a short period of time to try and breathe and regain perspective. And then if they find someone like you, you can help them work out what's next? I can. Absolutely. Julia, the other thing that I wanted to tell the audience today is that you've created a special checklist about burnout. Can you tell the audience how they get that, where it is, and yes. how it will help them? If they go to my website, it's www.juliaswellnesscoaching.com. At the top, they'll see a download button. And then they can just hit that button and download the checklist. There's 10 questions on it. And yeah, if you're if you can answer yes to even even one of those, uh -huh. you're in burnout. So do you see Then I you'll suggest... connect with them yes. to check on them, yes? Yes. Amazing. And they can also they can also email me at oh. jrwellness166 at gmail.com. And just for the audience, if you've missed any of those links, they will be attached to this interview so that you can find them, so that you can download them. But if you go to Julia's website, Julia, can you repeat your website again for the audience? Yes, www.juliaswellnesscoaching.com. So very simple, audience, juliaswellnesscoaching.com. And I know I've been on the site and there's a big green button, click download and you will get the information and then you'll be able to connect with Julia. And the thing about connecting with Julia is the fact that she's actually been through and navigated this herself. In recent times, it's not like it was 10, 20 years ago. This is in recent no. times. So Julia's got firsthand experience in helping people with burnout and working with workplaces that might be toxic. So Julia, is it the case sometimes where employees recognize it's a toxic workplace before the bosses um understand or recognize that it is uh that's that's a tricky one because mm -hmm. i know when I, when I was in that i didn't look upon the situation until after i had left to say oh i'm actually was... in a toxic work environment right yeah. Then yeah. I don't think I don't think it's something that people think about. I think people There's just there's a think, lack oh, of awareness, well, isn't it? I think it's well, I, this is work, this is probably normal, but it's not normal. It's not normal. We should enjoy going to work or at least we feel should. Uh, at least feel like we want to go there. So if you start feeling on a regular basis, I just don't want to go to work, I just can't get out of bed, I just don't want to be there. 
that should be a There's trigger. Something wrong. <laughs> that should be yeah. a trigger that goes, oh, something's not right here. Something's not right here. Um, for many of us, though, Julia, there's all sorts of excuses like, oh, I have to, I've got a mortgage yeah. to pay, I've got bills to pay, I've got, that's, that's, what I, I, yeah. but that's not that's how what we're I, meant to live, is it? We're not no, meant to not. live like that. We're meant to live with joy. The first and most important thing of being a human being is that our life should be joyful and we it shouldn't yeah. accept anything less and joyful of course they're going to be bumps on the road and there's going to oh, be yeah. difficult things to deal with but our resting state if you'd like to call it that should be happiness and joy it should absolutely and i will say no no human being on the planet should ever go to work and feel unsafe definitely physically and mentally yeah and, and Physically, absolutely, without a doubt. But often people don't think about their mental state in terms of work. So in a toxic working environment, it's actually your mental state that suffers the most. And we know from research that if your mental health is not looked after, it has a physical impact on your body. And you suffered that, didn't you, Julia? I did, yeah. Yeah. As I said, yeah, I just my body just about shut down. Yeah, yeah. So I never other, had it that bad before. Yeah. So other people across the world would be experiencing this, and they need to understand that it's possibly due to um, where they're going to work, and you can change that, and you can work yeah, through it. And there are wonderful people like Julia to help you navigate that as well. Julia, I'm curious, this is your passion and your life's work. What's next for you? Well, actually, this idea just came to me yesterday, actually, mm-hmm. that I should s- start writing an ebook. So, Congratulations. Yeah, I had never thought much about writing before, but now I'm like, wow. Yeah, I think that could be done. And I would encourage you to do that because um, it's so easy to, um, it's not easy to write, but it's easy to publish and put out um, things like ebooks and audio books. Um, they're readily accessible to everyone across the globe. And the ability to do that is is only related to your time and effort. And I think from knowing you and your journey that that ebook would be helpful to a large number of people. Julia, where do you see yourself in five years time? This is my favorite question to ask. <laughs> What's your uh, vision? Just- Tell the audience about your bigger vision. My bigger vision is I definitely like to start including speaking Mm -hmm. in my work, speaking at events, conferences. Mm -hmm. I'd love to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to connect with a larger group of people across the world Mm -hmm. and to help them. And I'm hoping in five years' time that burnout will be a little bit more bit understood what... yes julie where julie whereabouts in the world are you based just so the audience knows uh i'm in alberta canada so but saying that you're from canada doesn't make a difference you can actually work with people we are all over the world oh yeah And you can do that virtually or in person. So there should be nothing holding anyone back from connecting with you and getting your help in assisting them with either burnout or um, toxic workplaces because we have Zoom. We do. Julia, I've loved talking to you today. I'm really appreciative of your knowledge wisdom and understanding and the fact that you've been able to share it so freely with our audience today now audience please don't forget to reach out to julia 
Um, we, you've been given her website. We'll also include her email and her LinkedIn profile. Now, Julia, that's where you like to connect with people a lot is on LinkedIn. For those yes. of you that um, are familiar with the platform, it's an, an, it's an amazing platform for connecting with people. Um, and I encourage you to jump on and connect with Julia today. And if any of you are listening and have questions or concerns about burnout or toxic workplaces again just reach out email julia connect oh, yeah. with her and ask her questions she is a very good facilitator in the workplace and she's also very good at navigating people through what must feel quite scary for a lot of people because you were scared in that moment weren't you julia oh yeah yeah you, i was yeah, you thought, oh, my goodness, what the heck is going on with me? So for those of you that are listening or watching and you perhaps had some symptoms, you're like, oh, my goodness, what is that? And listening to us talk about it today, you thought, oh, okay, work's been pretty darn tough of late. Yeah. You now know that you're looking at burnout. Now, you don't want to get to burnout because it's kind no, of a don't. steep climb out of that bucket. And if you can circumnavigate that by working with someone like Julia, you'll be so glad that you did, won't you, Julia? Absolutely. Yeah. You needed a Julia at that moment in your life. Um, and now you've become that person that you needed in that moment, haven't you? I did, yes. And I'm so glad I'm that you did. Grateful. Yeah. Julia Reinenberg, thank you so much for coming on Everyday Business Show today and talking us through toxic workplaces and burnout. That, my friends, is your lot for this week. We will be back next week with another Everyday Business Show. Um, Julia Reinhardt, please make sure you connect with Julia. Julia, thank you for your wisdom today. Um, I look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tony. It's shows with business owners that puts them in front of a global audience and in behind those shows is a whole range of things from digital magazines to social media to blogging to email to lead generation just a whole range of things